بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اتبع هداه وانتهى جنهجه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين تركنا المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ثم أما بعد so الحمد لله we continue with our sessions entitled the journey is the destination the path of the Arifin Billah, the, the path of the knowers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the path that has been referred to in that which we recite 17 times a day in Surah Al-Fatiha, Sirat Al-Ladina An'amd Alayhim, the path of those that you have bestowed upon before us, or you continue to bestow upon. And we, we hope and we uh, plead and implore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us amongst those of uh, who are the people of the Sirat and Mustaqim of the straight path and out of the blessings and mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us a messenger that has shown us how to be on this path and he has out of those blessings also sent to us people who are the heirs of the messenger وسلم, who will continue to show us how to be on this path and to help us apply it and live it to the best of our ability in the particular times and context that we face uh, each of us uh, both as individuals and collectively in whichever society we may reside in so what we're trying to do here is just uh, uh, benefit from the words of these heirs of the prophets uh, and try to apply them in our life as Sheikh Al-Akbar says in Arabi Al-Hatimi he said I am a Turjuman I am just an interpreter I am interpreting the words of those who have been blessed and those of the words of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and we endeavor not to put anything of our own caprice of our own whim uh, of our own uh, inclination uh, to uh, in an effort not to sully or to uh, distort those beautiful meanings and those beautiful words and hence this brings us to what we are currently talking about which is spiritual refinement and discipline and the way that one can be like Salaf Salih like the righteous predecessors who were able to count the number of words that they said in the day and who took to heart uh, the the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they either say something good or remain silent uh, and they took to heart the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the best thing that has been said by the Prophet وسلم, and, all, and all those before him La ilaha illallah and so they live La ilaha illallah in all of their breaths in all of their steps in all of their moments of silence in their, their moments of movement they try to endeavor to live this and this is why we're here this is why Allah SWT put us here this is the test and the tribulation and we are going to encounter obstacles to endeavoring to be like this and that is also part of the test and the tribulation so this manhaj, uh, this path or this methodology then that has been honed and has been developed and has been practiced for centuries uh, often referred to by its specialist name of tasawwuf uh, and as we said many times before if uh, one is weary of this term because of that of how it has been portrayed and how it has been let's say in a sense uh, vilified uh, in, in, in many parts of our Muslim community as as if it's some sort of sect or movement or fifth column within Islam and is somehow separate from Islam and it has a separate theology from mainstream Islam and a separate way of doing things and somehow a person can be a Sufi and not be a Muslim and all of these things that um, uh, don't have any semblance of truth uh, this is taqawwul as they say. Taqawwul means making things up, saying things that are not true. Certainly there are people who are Muslims who still live today and lived in the past who, who veered off the path and may have been affiliated with uh, tasawwuf or affiliated with uh, tasqiyat in nafs uh, and spiritual refinement and there still continue to be people like that but we also have people who were affiliated with the study of hadith or the study of Quran or the uh, the study of chemistry for that matter who were affiliated with it and went off uh, the path and, and were not uh, proper representatives of, of those traditions so that should not deter us uh, from pursuing it and 
uh, taking to heart the words of Imam, one of the great uh, Mashayikh and Awliya, Abu Hassan al-Shadhili, radiallahu anhu, and he said, whoever does not delve into this discipline of ours, this science of ours, then if they die, it's like they died and they are uh, insistent on committing a sin. So in other words, uh, to rectify the soul, to rectify one's actions, one de one's deeds, and the surest and most effective and most sustainable way to rectify your deeds and your words is to rectify your state. Because the words just are the uh, reflection of that which is in the soul. And the deeds also are a reflection of that which is in the soul. So if this qalb is a salah, salaha, salahat al jawarihu kulluha, or kama qal al Nabi or salah al jasadu kullu. If this heart is then rectified, the spiritual heart, then everything else will be rectified as well. And that has to begin with knowledge. And we try to take the little bit of knowledge that we know and put it into practice. And in some of the akhbar, it's mentioned that whoever does by the knowledge that they know, then Allah will give them knowledge of that which they do not know. And uh, may Allah SWT make that true for all of us. So we've reached the section, those of you who have the handout, which would be number section 3, or, or, or bullet point 3 of section 2, which we call spiritual refinement and discipline. And number 3, the human condition is akin to a harvested field, and every field reaps that which was planted within it. فَيَقُولُ الْمُصَنِّفِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ وَنَفْعَمُ بِذُونَ فِي الدَّارِينَ آمِينَ وَرَضِيَنَا عَنَّا وَعَنْكُمْ فَصْلَ الطَّبِيعَةُ مِثْلُ الْمَزْرَعَةُ وَكُلُّ أَرْضٍ تُنْبِتُ مَا زَرَعَ فِيهَا So this parable of uh, this life and the time that you're given in this life to be like a mazra'ah, right? To be like a field that is to be cultivated that is to be irrigated, that is to be maintained, that is to be beautified. So, so many of the things that apply to how we would treat a field uh, uh, of the earth, and we too come from the earth, it's similar uh, in terms of how we're dealing with our souls. And so we'll see that uh, in his explanation. So he says, فَإِنْ كَانَ الْعَبْدُ مُسْتَغْرِقًا فِي حُبِّ الدُّنْيَا مُقْبِلٍ عَلَيْهَا بِقَلْبِهِ فرحا بما أوتي منها حزينا على ما فاته منها زاهدا فيما في يده راغبا فيما يدخل منها عليه معظم معظم لقدر ما من أقبلت عليه الدنيا فإليه الإشارة بقوله تعالى إن هؤلاء يحبون العاجلة ويذرون وراءهم يوما ثقيلا and we'll see this from the author often that he will kind of give a description and then bring the sort of uh, relevant verse of, of where he understood these meanings. So here he's talking about being mustaghriq fi hubbid dunya, to be completely encompassed in the love of the dunya, right? And dunya here means that which we vie and compete for and accumulation of wealth and accumulation of uh, platitudes and, and accolades and awards and, you know, the things that we get upset about when we find someone else has it and we don't have it this is kind of this this competition this false competition of the dunya and uh, we live in increasingly societies that are defined by consumerism and materialism and so the question of one's worth invariably goes back to uh, how much money they have in their bank account and uh, uh, you know where they take their vacations and how many rooms does their home have and how many square feet is their porch and uh, uh, you know what is your what does your career look like and you know have you gotten the uh, quote unquote co corner office and how many people uh, report to you at work and, and and these sorts of things and you know how many connections you have on LinkedIn and so um, defining oneself then by what are really these artificial things is a recipe for a uh, really a, a disaster on the level of the soul because those things will never fulfill the soul uh, in fact they may take the soul into a deeper abyss of uh, sadness and depression and feelings of inadequacy and feeling that you will never measure up and so forth but 
what if we instituted a new standard by which we can see how we measure up, how honest we are, how caring we are, how kind we are, how we deal and relate with people, uh, how we smile with people when we greet them, and the Prophet ﷺ called this a sadaqa, uh, a charity, um, how we may bring hope and light and goodness into people's lives. Um, that may be another standard, and ultimately that's going to be more nourishing for the soul. But this istiqraq fi hubbi dunya, for this very artificial and naked materialism and consumerism, uh, if the servant is like this, muqbilin alayha bi qalbi, right? And this is an important qualifier. Muqbilin, yeah, to be reaching towards it, to be going, vying for it with your heart. So it, you are seeking it to fulfill some sort of um, uh, kind of uh, nourishment of your soul, of your heart. You think you're going to have what they call تحقيق الذات يعني you're going to actualize your person by what you have and what you can acquire and what you can accumulate of the dunya if that's what you're doing فرحا بما أوتي منها happy with that which you get from it and then you're sad when you lose things from it and then uh, not so thankful this is what he means by زاهد فيما في يده in other words that which you actually have you don't give a lot of stock to you don't consider it رَاغِبًا فِيمَا يَدْخُلُ مِنْهَا عَلَيْهِ But seeking that which is coming to others of the dunya. مُعَظِّمٍ لِقَدْرِ مَنْ أَقْبَلَتْ عَلَيْهِ الدُّنْيَا right? And then you see those who have a lot of dunya, you have تَعْظِيم of them. Right? تَعْظِيم means you see them as like, wow, mashallah, they have all this money and, and all these things. And we're going to see later, he's going to uh, look at uh, Qarun. In the Quran and the people that who were impressed by Qarun, and Qarun was a man who lived during the time of Moses, Musa alayhi salam, and some riwayat indicate that he was a cousin or a relative of him, and uh, he had much wealth and he had uh, great influence and power, but all of that was for naught, as it was taken away from him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he was not a thankful servant. So, he said, then you are like the ones referred to in the, in the verse in Surah Al-Insan, Ayah 27 إِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ يُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ وَيَذَرُونَ وَرَاءَهُمْ يَوْمًا ثَقِيلًا Those who have these attributes, يُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ They love the ajila. They love, which is, this is the dunya, it's called the ajila. Al-ajil is مَا هُوَ حَاضِر That which is we're in right now. And ajil also means that which is fleeting. So it's present and fleeting. They love this ajila. وَيَذَرُونَ وَرَاءَهُمْ يَوْمًا ثَقِيلًا Right, and they leave behind him the most important day, this heavy day, the day of reckoning. And Allah subhanahu wa وَيَسِفَتُ مَنْ أَسْكَرَتْهُ الْغَفْلَةُ وَخَرَجَتْ عَظَمَةُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ قَلْبِ وَلَهَذَا الصِّنْفِ الْإِشَارَةُ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَى لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ قَارُونَ إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ وَكُلُّ مُحِبٍ لِلدُّ uh, no, may Allah have mercy on you that if the dunya is great and it is uh, something great in your heart or in the heart of the servant then you will also see as great anyone who has something of dunya as well and will wish that they have what that other person has and everyone will see as great that which they desire and this is the sifa this is the attribute of the ibi abid of the dunya and the abid of the ahwa as we talked about in the previous session so this is an attribute of the persons the people who are slaves to the dunya and slaves to their own caprice to their own whim right it's a nice way he said it here and it's also the attribute of those have been inebriated or put into a drunken stupor by their own remissness by their heedlessness and then خَرَجَتْ عَظَمَةُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ قَلْبِ 
and then the Azama of Allah, of God, leaves their heart. Because the two can't reside in the heart at the same time. You cannot have Ta'zim of dunya and then Ta'zim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simultaneously. Because they're literally uh, incompatible with one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everything the dunya is not. And um, if you feel like that having a lot of dunya is great and then also somehow linking that to having seeing a greatness of Allah then uh, you're going to be severely disappointed sorely disappointed after that and there is in some I think religious circles of commitment perhaps this idea that if you are a good servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah will reward you or you should have the expectation that Allah will reward you with dunya that Allah will give you wealth and give you ease and give and let you accumulate things as a reward for your service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is actually uh, not the theology of Muslims um, this may be found in, in other religious traditions to some degree but not really in the uh, authentic and sacred tradition of Islam it's something that I think has come out about rather recently that there's this idea that you know, Allah will give you dunya as your reward. Allah may give you dunya as a reward. He may give you dunya as a trial or a tribulation. In and of itself is not, it's not a, a sign of, of either. Uh, what's a sign of either? Iqbalika ala Allah. Jam'uka ala Allah. You know, to, to, to want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have jama, to, to have your heart reconciled with the decree of God and to be contented with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any circumstance. Whether he gives you dunya or he takes it away, or whether he gives you a little bit and gives you more, that, that's not the point. The point is that it is, uh, where is your heart with God when you have those things? And so there are people of this ummah who had a lot of dunya, who had much wealth. Abd rahman ibn Awf had much wealth. Uh, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan also had much wealth. Um, if you go to the uh, uh, garden, uh, uh, date garden of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, anyone what's left of it in Medina, you feel like you're in paradise. And that's just like a, you know, an, an indication that it's something of what it used to be. And they, they had much wealth. But they had iqbal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was not their concern. Their concern was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Someone else like Abu Hurairah had no wealth. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud didn't have any wealth. And these were uh, the great uh, also carriers and heirs of the the tradition of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so usually when we talk about them we don't really mention so much what they had in terms of dunya what they didn't have in terms of dunya their their rutbah their degree or their rank is is not measured by that um, but as we said we we live in a world that is increasingly defined by uh, materialism and by material things but such people are abid al ahwa the dunya, the servants of their ahwa and the servants of the dunya. And they've been inebriated or put into a drunken stupor by their own remisslessness, and the greatness of God has left their heart. And this uh, group of people is indicated by the verse that we mentioned uh, in uh, Surah Al Qasas, Ayah 97. <laughs> The ones who desired the life of the dunya, they said, we wish that we had what Qarun has been given. إِنَّهُ لَذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ He has been given a great allotment, or he is of a great allotment. وَكُلُّ مُحِبٌ مُحِبٍ لِلدُّنْيَا مُسْتَغْرِقٌ فِي حُبِّهَا So everyone who loves the dunya is going to be encompassed by it. فَوَلَاحِقٌ بِالَّذِينَ تَمَنَّوا رُتْبَةَ قَارُونَ so it's like they are with the degree or the rank with those who wanted the degree of Qarun. And this is what we mean when we say that the Qur'an especially, it's not just qisas, turwa, right? Not just stories, but in each of those stories there is a, an archetype, right? There is a, something that is going, you're going to see its type over and over again in other parts of, of not just our history, but your own life. So the archetype of the Abid al dunya are those who tamanna ma utiya qarun, those who wanted and wished for that which qarun uh, had had been given. Wa alam an al dunya idha rasakhat fil qalbi wa stawtanat 
ظهر ذلك على جوارح العبد بتكالبه ومقاتلته عليها وشدة رغبته فيها فيسلبه الله تعالى لذة القناعة ويمنعه سياسة الزاهدين ويبعده عن وراء العارفين فإن القلب إذا لم يقنع لو ملك الدنيا بحذافيرها لم يشبع وقال بعض الحكماء من سمنت قناعته طاب له مرقه وقال بعضهم القناعة هي الغنى الأكبر ولن تخفى صفة القانعين So if the dunya plants itself that's what it means إذا وسخت right, plants itself in the heart واستوطنت and takes up residence ظهر ذلك على جوارح العبد بتكالبه ومقاتلته عليها Then as we said the heart is the kind of the center the heart is the, is the master and all of the limbs uh, and the body parts are tabah, they follow. So if the dunya is firmly planted in the heart and it takes up residence, ظهر ذلك على جوارح العبد. Then the signs of this, you, this will be indicated in the things that you do in, in, your, in your body. In other words, what you choose and what you fight over. بالتكالب والمقاتلة. Right, تكالب means you know, being in, engrossed and encompassed in uh, vying for the dunya and even to the level of muqatala you will fight for it you will fight over it you will vie over it uh, you will become upset when you don't get it you will become upset if someone else that you consider of your peers gets it and you don't get it uh, this is rusukh ad-dunya wastitan ad-dunya fil qalb wa shiddati raghbatihi fiha right and this raghba and this desire fa yaslubuhu allah ta'ala ladhat al-qana'a if this happens by your own deeds, by your own actions, then Allah may take away from you lazat al qanaa, right? Which would be the the coolness and the pleasure of being contented with your circumstances, right? Qanaa actually means to be convinced of something, you know. Aqnaatuhu bi I convinced him. So to be have this conviction, conviction that what you have is exactly what you're supposed to have, and you are not going to have a dollar or a dirham or a lira or a dinar or a dirham more than what you actually have uh, this is called al qanaa so that which is meant for you for you will always come to you and that which is not meant for you you will never have it so why look for it why um, uh, lose sleep over it why uh, be anxious about it so that there's a type of ladha right and this ladha it's I think it begins as a sort of relief, like, I don't want to worry about all that stuff. And let me just, you know, worry about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and my state with God. And then it can develop into a ladha, right? It, it's, a, it's a type of, as he says here, ghina. It's a true wealth. It's a true, uh, to be self-sufficient in that say, or to be sufficient with God, that you don't have to vie for all of these things everyone else is vying for. But if you let the dunya take up residence in your heart Allah may take away from you and take away from you the siyasa of the zuhad or zahideen those who only take from, from the dunya what they need and so you may lose that siyasa in other words that let's call it a policy of only taking that which you need from the dunya and then you find yourself wanting more and more of it and then you are removed also from the wara, the scrupulousness of al-'arifin, of the knowers of Allah subhanahu wa taala. فإن القلب إذا لم يقنع لو ملك الدنيا بحذافيرها لم يشبع. This is like this is the eternal truth. This is the principle. That once you become convinced of this principle, then you will not desire to seek it after that. And what is what he just mentions here? فإن القلب the heart إذا لم يقنع if you don't have this قناعة if you don't have this conviction of the soul. لو ملك الدنيا بحذافيرها لم يشبع. Even if it were to acquire and accumulate the whole dunya, everything that's in it, it would not be satiated. It would not consider it to be enough. And the Prophet ﷺ informed us of this. He said if, uh, if the sons and daughters of Adam had two mountains of gold, they would have wished for the third. And so, uh, uh, that's the nature of our condition if we don't have conviction right if we don't have qana if we are not convinced of that which we have waqala ba'd al-hukama 
right? And some of the hukama, some of the people of, of hikmah, of wisdom said, Man saminat qana'atu taba lahu maraqu. Man, and that's also a nice tabir here in Arabic. Man saminat qana'atu. So it's samina, mina simna, means something that becomes, you know, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, full in terms of, 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 uh, of, of the meat that it has and, and full of the, uh, you know, maybe the, you know, it's delicious because it's it's uh, good meat and it has a little bit of fat that gives it uh, flavor and so forth. So, man saminat, saminat qana'atuhu. So, if your conviction is like this, it becomes a full conviction. Taba lahu maraqu. Right, then the maraq, right, which is the, you know, the sauce that comes from the stew of the meat, taba. Right, then it becomes delicious. So if you have qana'ah, then anything that you take, you get of the dunya becomes delicious to you, becomes satisfying to you, right? So you, you will not have this lack of satisfaction or, or lack of ishba' as, as he said here. But as long as you're not convinced, as long as you don't have qana'ah, then you will continue to seek uh, the dunya. And no matter how much you get of it, you will still be unsatiated and unfulfilled. قال بعضهم القناعة هي الغناء الأكبر، and some of them said that conviction or قناعة is الغناء الأكبر. It is the greatest wealth. It's the true wealth to have that. والانتفاق تخفى صفة القانعين، right? And uh, then it will not be, uh, you know, will not, you will not be lost upon, will not be lost upon you the the attribute of the قانعين, right? As he's described here of those who have conviction. With their circumstances. وعلم أن قلب محب الدنيا مثل البحر العميق تجري فيه أنهار الدنيا وعيونها منذ كانت ولا تظهر له زيادة ولا عذوبة. وقال بعضهم قلب محب الدنيا مثل النار المطلة كلما ازداد حطبها ازداد لهبها. Another metaphor. Know that the heart of the one who loves the dunya, it's like al bahr al amiq, or like also a deep, vast ocean. Tajri fihi anhar al dunya. Within it, all of the rivers of the dunya run within it. Wa ayunuha mundu kanat la wa la tadhar lahu ziyadatun wa la aduba. And all of the ayun and all of the underwater aquifers and wells also run within it. However, la tadhar lahu ziyadatun wa la aduba. And then there is nothing that will be added to it. There's no ziyada. What arduba? And there is no freshness of the water, right? It's all salty. وقال بعضهم قلب محب الدنيا مثل النار الموقدة كلما ازداد حطبها ازداد لهبها. They said also the heart of the one who loves the dunya is like uh, a fire, you know, that has been made from firewood. When you increase the firewood, then the lahab, then also the fire itself only increases. So as the hatab then is the dunya, the, the, the firewood. You keep throwing firewood at it, but it's still, it's still going to eat it up and it's not satiated. And unless you keep giving it firewood, uh, you know, the, the fire will, will, you know, will, will, will cease to continue. So you, it never is satisfied. It needs more. وعلم رحمك الله أن حب الدنيا موافق لتضاع النفوس يستلذه الطبع وكل شيء يستلذه الطبع لا يزول إلا بشوب مرارة الصبر والصبر ليس كل الرجال رجالة So here also he points to a, a, an essential fact, an essential truth that love of the dunya it is in agreement with general personal inclination of human beings that's why it's difficult to get over right there's a there's a type of uh, and a type of pleasure that you take in, in acquiring things and people praising you and and uh, and being liked by people all the things that we consider parts of, of this dunya. and then he cites another essential truth and this is also kind of the, the, the essential, quintessential aspect of mujahada, right? Of striving. What are you going to face? Kullu shay'in yastalidduhu taba. Everything that you may have a personal inclination for, obviously that is not in agreement with the sharia. La yazulu illa bi shurbi marat al-sabr. 
it will not go away unless you drink from the bitterness of patience and forbearance. وَهَذَا مَقَامِ salik, right? So the salik, if they're trying to make their way, then they should have this expectation. There's going to be some bitterness. Then not everything's going to be easy. Not everything's going to be in exactly the way that I want it. Uh, not everything is going to be uh, forthcoming in the time that I want it either. And all of these are aspects of forbearance and of sabr and of patience. Was sabru laysa kullu rijali rijala, right? And sabr maqam is sabr, so it's a station, right? The state of, of forbearance is not for everybody. It's basically what he says. Laysa kullu rijali rijala. It's not for everybody. Some people can handle it, some people cannot. Wa'alam rahimakallah in hub dunya mithlu hub alladhi yubdharu hawl al fakh. Oh, sorry, al hab alladhi yubdharu hawl al fakh. فكل طائر يلتذ بذلك الحب وينسى خديعة الفخ ما أصرح لك واعلم أن الفخ لا يكيد إلا بعصفور يلتذ بطعم ما في الفخ وليس له في وليس له على السنونية من سبيل لأن السنونية أشبه الأشياء بالزهاد فافهم معنى ما أشرنا به إليك so he gives another uh, metaphor. He says, No, may Allah have mercy upon you, that the love of the dunya is like uh, the seed that is put around the bird trap. So I guess at the, at the time they used to set these traps to you know, capture pigeons and birds or whatever it might be. So uh, the seeds that are put around the bird trap, So the bird, when it sees the seed, it sees the seed. It doesn't see the trap that's around it that's going to capture it. Uh, and so it forgets about the machination, the khadi'a, right? The plotting and the machination and the treachery and the trickery of the trap around it. And if it doesn't see that, ma then it will, you know, it's going to get caught and eaten after that. But this trap will only work with the type of bird that seeks the type of food or seed that is within the trap. وَلَيْسَ لَهُ عَلَى السُّنُونِيَةِ مِنْ سَبِيلٍ لَأَنُّ السُّنُونِيَةَ أَشْبَهُ أَشْيَاءَ بِالزُّهَادِ So the sununiyah, he says, is a type of bird that is not interested in bird seed. I guess it likes worms or it eats something else. Uh, so it's not going to go for the trap because it's not interested in the seed to begin with. So... He says, فَفْهَمْ مَعْنَ مَا أَشَرْنَ بِهِ إِلَيْكُ مَا هَذَا الْمَعْنَى What is the meaning that he's indicating here? Is if you have zuhud, right? If you are in a place of conviction and qana'ah and you're not interested in what is in the trap, right? And here the trap is, is losing your soul, right? Uh, to dunya. So you're not interested in the dunya that's there and uh, you renounce it you're not in need of it, then you won't fall into its trap. You won't fall into its lair, right? And get snared into it and, and then not find your way out. So uh, similar to the bird that is not interested in the bird seed. It, it moves on, it sees it, it moves on, and then it's safe. So there's a type of salama, safety, in, in renouncing that which we do not need from the dunya. zuhud, And usually they talk about sabr and zuhud kind of one after the other. So it begins with forbearance and patience, and then, you know, taking that forbearance and patience to the level of uh, renouncing that which you don't need, so you don't have a, uh, uh, a soulful attachment with it. So it's not about possessing those things, or if they're given to you, that's not the idea. The idea is, is your soul attached to it, and even worse, is your soul possessed by it? So that now it possesses you rather than you possessing it. When, you're, when your material things, your acquisitions begin to possess you, then you become a slave to them, rather than the other way around. Yes, they are there for our use, and we have you know, uh, access to, to, to food, and access to, uh, hopefully, inshallah, clean drinking water, and access to sun, and access to you know, paths and trails. We can find exercise, and, and, and things of the dunya in, in general, and they're there for our use. And they're there for us to use and not abuse and to use in a way that we're grateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we go beyond that and we start abusing them, then we start abusing ourselves. 
and this is what he's pointing out here. وَإِيَّاكَ أَن تَقْتَحِمَ مَا فِيهِ هَلَاكُكَ وَإِتْلَافُ دِينِكَ فَإِنَّ أَشْرَارَ الرِّجَالِ يَنْكَبُّونَ عَلَى مَا تَهْوَاهُ أَنفُسُهُمْ وَيَتَكَالَبُونَ عَلَى مَا يُوَافِقُ فَضَائِعُهُمْ بَعْدَ مَعْرِفَتِهِمْ بِنَهِي سَيِّدِهِمْ وَتَحْذِيرِ رُسُلِهِمْ وَنَصِيحَةِ عُلَمَائِهِمْ وَإِلَى هَذَا الصِّنْفِ الْإِشَارَةُ بِقَوْلِ تعالى وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَنْبَاءِ مَا فِيهِ مُزْدَجَرْ حِكْمَةٌ بَالِغَةٌ فَمَا تُغْنِي النُّذُرْ So, he says, إِيَّاكَ أَنْ تَقْتَحِمَ مَا فِيهِ هَلَاكُكَ وَإِتْلَافُ دِينِكَ So be careful to don't approach that which is you're going to find your destruction and lose your deen. For the worst of people are the ones who follow what their caprice tells them to follow and go merely by their personal inclination even though or after they know that which their master namely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers have warned you about and that which the heirs of the messengers and ulama have given you counsel about and despite all of that nevertheless you follow your ahwa and the reason you follow the hawa is because you are uh, not uh, patient with the mirara, right? You're not patient with the bitterness that will come if you fight your nafs. And this is almost like, you know, the, the bane of our existence today. Uh, we have made sort of, um, how, do you, how do you say, a, a cottage industry out of just following your nafs. Whole industries have been erected uh, so people can follow their nafs because it's very profitable for many, many people. So it's profitable for Facebook for us to put everything out there and prof profitable for Instagram, which is owned by Facebook and profitable for the gaming industry uh, for people to spend billions and billions of dollars a year, uh, adults, not children, uh, on gaming. And it's profitable for the in por pornography industry. Again, billions and billions of dollars because it allows people, the lowest common denominator than themselves, to follow that and so forth. Um, and so the, the snares are many, the, the, the traps are many, the, uh, the danger zones and the pitfalls are many. But we are the Ummah of Islam and the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We know the dangers of these things. So to allow ourselves to follow it nonetheless after knowing its dangers, he said, is like what is referred to in the verse here. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَهُ مِنَ الْأَنْبَاءِ مَا فِيهِ مُزْدَجَرْ حِكْمَةٌ بَالِغَةٌ فَمَا تُغْنِي النُّذُرْ And it has come to them مِنَ الْأَنْبَاءِ Right? From the, the news or from the, the forewarning مَا فِيهِ مُزْدَجَرْ Right? Enough for one to be cautious Enough for to repel one or to stop one in their tracks before they fall into it حِكْمَةٌ بَالِغَةٌ Right? Uh, a wisdom that has reached its apex right? but for them unfortunately the nudur the, the nadir the, the warning does not suffice so فهم عاكفون على معاصي ولا هذا الصنف الإشارة بقول تعالى سنستدرجهم من حيث لا يعلمون. So let's leave the استدراج استدراج part for next time. But the last part here. Uh, so he says يا أخي أو يا أختي لطريق أهل الله طريق أهل الزهد. You know, be from the people of the people of Zuhud. Uh, you know, سالكا. Right. Try to traverse that path. Uh, Yes, you will taste the bitterness when you when you leave things that you're there's a personal inclination, but that bitterness will turn into sweetness, right? So from the when the zuhud, yatamakkan, just like the dunya tatamakkan, al tarsakh, just like the dunya can take up residence, 
in your heart, so can all of these beautiful meanings can take up residence in your heart. So if zuhud, the true meaning of zuhud, uh, takes up residence in your heart, and then there's a bitterness initially, but then there will be a sweetness when the fruit of the zuhud, the qana'ah, right, the conviction and being contented with the circumstances that have been decreed for you, then there is a qana'ah. Right, then there is a riyahiyya, then there is an ease, and there is a tranquility, and there's a serenity, and there is a lack of angst, and uh, a feeling of being at ease. Well, all of the people of dunya, that's what they want, right? They're looking for all those things, but they think when they accumulate these things, that's what they're going to get. And then when they find, when they accumulate it, and they acquire it, that they don't get that, or they get it only for a fleeting moment, and then it goes away, it dissipates, then they look for the next thing. And so literally they're like the hamster in the wheel. Keep running around and running around and running around and never going anywhere, never reaching a destination. So be from the people of Zuhud. And for the states of the Mukhtar, right, the one who's deluded, leave it, abandon it, forsake it. And do not be like the people where the dunya has played with them. And uh, they have not been forewarned by the fear of their Lord and has left the admonitions and thrown them behind their back and instead has been busy with satisfying the pleasure of their stomach and of their sexual parts and to this category Allah mentions uh, talking about the people of Hud but there's an indication this is what they said to Hud whether you forewarn us or don't forewarn us right so whether you forewarn us or don't forewarn us or if you're from the admonitions or not we're not going to listen right look for the safety of your deen so here we're looking for the safety of our deen there are other things that are going to not just give you the safety of the deen but they're going to raise you in rank here we're just looking for salama we're just looking to be safe and not falling fil mahalik and things that are destructive don't lose your deen, don't lose it, because if you do, you will, you will suffer the sorest type of regret. And we'll start with that tomorrow, inshallah, or the next session. So I'll stop here.